Welcome back to Country Basket Weaving. I'm Sandy Atkinson and the basket we've chosen to work on today is our elaborated market basket. It's a basic market but it has some different and some new steps that we'll be doing on it. The material and the cut pattern that you're going to need for this one is 3 quarter inch flat flat reed. Take and cut 17 pieces 30 inches long each. 3 eighths inch flat, quarter inch flat. You will also need number two or number three round. A 24 inch notched handle. You'll also need, if you'd like to put in the dyed reed, quarter inch and 5 eighths flat dyed. Number one and number three seagrass. To get started on this, I'm going to assume you've already got yours cut and soaking. You need to soak it a couple of minutes at least. I'm going to reach in here. We're going to take out our long pieces first. There should be nine of these. And we're going to mark the centers as we always do. Stick them under our book. On this basket you want to mark your centers on the wrong side. Most baskets are marked that way. However, you'll come across a pattern occasionally that is not. Stick all of these nine pieces under your book, lining up your centers. We don't have a handle to add this time until later on as we work. I'm not going to worry about my spacing yet. Something we'll do when we get up to that part. And I'm going to go in and get my other pieces. And going with an over-under pattern, we're going to weave this over our first spoke, under, over, until we come to the end. We have nine spokes going across here. That means we have one in the center. <coughs> and we're going to line up our center lines so that our center markings run right with this spoke that we pulled across here. It's going to be, we're going to have four on each side of the center, one right down the center. Now, instead of weaving the next one, we're going to get our quarter inch flat and we're going to fill in this bottom as we weave. Right and wrong side is not going to matter at this point because we're going to be weaving both ways with it. We're going to come in here with our quarter inch and go the opposite way that we did our first row. It's going to look kind of messy until we get started here. Pull it through. Push this up here. Now we want to start spacing here. This is our centerpiece. Let's take our tape measure and measure from our center so we can get this. Let's put five inches right in the center and pull this in so it's to five. Pull this in so it's to ten. Clip it with our pin here so it's not going to slide on us. Kind of eyeball the rest of these as we center them. Keeping that one spoke in the middle. Now push these up tight. Come over to this end where I have the short end. Put a little push on it down there and weave it back the opposite of what we just put in. We want to end on top. I'm going to end here on top and just give this a clip here. Come and get this other end and do the same thing. It should, if I don't make any mistakes here, it'll cover up this one and we're going to weave right on top of this quarter inch that we already put in. I'm going to bring it over here. Now I have to end under, so I'm going to end under over here. Come back and finish weaving this in. As I tuck that under there, that hides that end. Now add your next spoke across here, going the opposite of your last quarter inch row. Bring it up. This is my center mark here. Push it up just as tight as you can push it. We'll go ahead and add another of a quarter inch, weaving at the opposite of the row we just put in. Pull it up tight. We don't want any gaps in the basket, so pull it up just as tight as you can. Leave myself about eight inches. Weave this row out, ending on top again. 
You're going to continue weaving back and forth this way until you finish. You're going to end with a large spoke, one of these that we cut. This is going to hide under here. When you get finished weaving all this out, this is what it should look like. You have to give me a minute as I go back and get it. I have it back here soaking. Get rid of our book. We've already finished with that. Okay, these are my nine pieces here. Oh, this is my... Well, this is the way it, it's supposed to be up here. And I've woven these back and forth, and that's created my base. Now we're going to take some number two or number three rounds you can use in this one. We want two different in lengths. We're going to go over twining again because it's important that you catch it. Go ahead and put a crimp in your, your round reed, starting on and under. Loop it over, taking the one to the left. We're going to go around, always picking up the one to the left, pulling the one to the right down. We'll go over our corners real quick again, too, to make sure you understand those. If this pulls in here, that's incorrect. We want to take this one first so it makes it lock in, and then come down and around. Okay? I think you understand twining. Let's do one more part, though. Let's pretend like we have come to an end here. And I need to add a piece. We've got a short piece here. Remember, we're going to pick this one up. It creates a little hole, stick it in the hole, and continue weaving. Okay, that's just a refresher. I want you to go around and I want you to do three rows on that again. When you finish your three rows, it should look like this one. We do get wet. Okay, here's three rows here. Now we're going to upset our basket. I think I have it upside down. Here we go. Here's my markings. We want the wrong side in. We're going to upset our basket. We're going to clip our four corners. We need to upset the ones in between of the corners also. We're going to put in three rows of our 3 8 inch. Let me clip these up real quickly here. Let's go in our bucket and get our 3 8 of an inch. Remember on that last bu basket also how sloppy it looked. It's going to do that until we get about three or four rows in. We're always going to start on an over. Go back to your original pattern on the bottom. Find what the pattern is. Start over. Make sure you have this, the right side out. The right side is the smooth side. Unclip your corner and go around. When you get around the corner again, you're going to go back and clip it up for about four rows until it starts holding itself together. These we're going to bend down. Clip our corner and go around. This market basket has the closed bottom in, so it won't let things fall through. Baskets make a beautiful gift. Everybody likes things that are homemade, because you've put your time and yourself into the baskets. Leave this row around. When we come to this one, let me clip my corner. Careful you don't pull your corners too tight. Remember we have to overlap four. We're going to overlap four. We're going to hide this end, cut it as long as we can without showing it, and tuck it in. Now we're going to turn the basket and do the other side so we don't get that bulk build up. Go the opposite of the row you just did. The 
this one's sliding, so I'm going to come back here and clip this so I don't lose this end. Come back and clip my corner. Takes lots of clothespins. Do the corner. I'd like to get three rows in, and then we're going to start building a pattern with our dyed reed. And the reed that I dyed here, I used basket dyes. They're made for the baskets. They don't dry them out. Uh, I use them fairly often. However, there's a lot of natural dyes you can use, such as black walnuts make a beautiful dye. You can also use beet juice, golden yarrow makes a golden dye. Tea and coffee will both dye your reed. Uh, I have one student, believe it or not, that uses Kool-Aid to get a pink color that she wants. I haven't tried that one yet. I don't know if it dries the reed out or not. When we first started weaving, we did use RIT dye, but we don't use it anymore because it does dry the reed out. And they've come out with so many beautiful basket dyes. There's my second row. Let's stick that end under there. I'll quickly re weave one more row, and you can see how this will start standing up by itself. Remember, I have to find a spot where I haven't started the previous row. Make sure the right side of my reed is out. This time, I should be able to leave my corners off. Straighten out your spokes as you weave. They'll have a tendency to lean one way or the other. Make sure they stand up, straight up and down. I'll leave my corners off this row. It seems to be going in well. Straighten up my spokes as I weave. Make sure I push the rows down so they're butted up to each other. You can make a lot of different beautiful patterns by just alternating colors. Uh, adding maybe a seagrass, which I've done in this basket. There's our third row. Remember, I start on top. I'm going to weave over four rows, cut it off, and it's going to hide underneath that fourth row. So you can never see where I begin and end a row. There's our three rows in. Now let's add a pattern color. I have some quarter inch that I've dyed brown. We're going to add that, and turn it over, and start in a new spot. Pull these reeds down. They should be in tight. Watch your spokes. Always going to start on top. Make sure I have the right reed, right side of the reed out. You'll be able to see this really well with the brown. Going to weave in a new color. Over and under, just a basic basket weave. I've also done this pattern where I went over two, under two, and then picked up a new over two, under two. I'll show you that basket. That's real pretty, too. I've got some gaps in here. Pull them down. Overlap four and cut it off. Hide that end under there. Okay, now reverse it again, and we're going to add another color. Let's add some green. This is larger. This one's 5 8 Add some 5 8 green. These are all optional. You could weave the whole basket up the side just using your 3 8 inch, which would be really pretty, and then just go ahead and, and stain it. Watch your corners. You don't want to pull them too tight. I'm weaving this row the opposite of the row that I put in just before this one. Straighten out your spokes. Overlap four. And hide that end. Okay, let's put in a row of seagrass just to do something different here. This is number one seagrass here. Let me show you the difference. This is number three. Can you see sizes? One's larger than the other. Let's put in the small. 
I've got enough here to do a couple of rows. Your seagrass now is going to start a little different. You're just going to start it where it would be under, and you're going to hide it underneath. And let's do a couple of rows now, because seagrass does not have to be wet. You can work with it dry. I'm going to go around. And I'm not going to cut when I start my next row. I'm going to keep right on going. Push these down. A tangle in it here. We're going to untangle it. I always, if I'm going to put in two rows, I will, with my seagrass, because it comes in a great big bundle, I would go around the basket twice and about a half a time again. That's going to give me plenty if I wanted two rows. Okay, I'm going to keep right on going with this. And I'll be going in the very same pattern, but it'll give me two nice rows here to keep that pattern going. I'll show you what this pattern here, I put in some browns and some yellows. Uh, some pinks gave me a different pattern. You can just do anything you want up the side of the basket. When you have it woven, you're going to put four more rows at the top. And then you're going to take your scissors, take my reed cutters. I'm going to do the same as we did in the basket before. If this weaver is on the outside, the spoke is on the inside, I'm going to trim it off. Now this is reed is wet, it doesn't cut quite as well. If it's on the outside, I'm going to give it a point. Taking my flathead screwdriver, I'm going to skip over the first row of weaving. Give this a good bend. Give this a good bend up. Skip over your first row of weaving. Come in here, lift up two or three rows and stick your spoke in there and work it down. Sometimes it'll split on you. Just work in both edges of the splits. Once we get our rim on, it won't show. Now we're going to reach into our bucket and get our rim. And we're going to put our rim on. Remember from our last program, we have to trim out about two inches. Take off some of the roundness. Start on the side and work this rim around. About every foot or so, we're going to put a clamp. And when we come over here to where we started our whittling, that's where we're going to trim this off. That's going to lay in there nicely for us. Do the same thing on the inside. Start in a different spot. Oops, forgot to trim this down. Trim off a couple inches. Okay, start in a, a spot opposite of where you put your started your rim. Let's use another clip over here. Flat side goes against the basket. Come to where you have your overlap. Go on about two inches to where you started your whittling and trim it off. Now we're going to insert our handle. We have a notched handle here. I have it kept together with a rubber band until I'm ready to use it. When you measure your notched handle, measure from the top of your notch around to the other side of your notch. This handle I want to insert in here, finding the middle of my basket. I'm going to pick up, get my screwdriver here, I'm going to pick up my rim and some rows of weaving, and I'm going to slide that notch handle down Come down here and pick up some more weaving and slide it down in there. You're going to have to really give it a push. You want that notch to go down there and the notch is going to hook on the bottom of the rim. Come around to the other side. See if I can do this laying down and get you a better shot here. Pick up the rim, pick up your weavers and slide it down in there. Give it a push until it lashes onto that so that the, the rim is resting on the notch. That's how you insert a notched handle. Very easy. Now we're going to take our lashing. I'm going to use quarter inch flat to lash. Give myself a point. I'm going to come in here. We're going to put our seagrass in here. We have a piece of seagrass. I'm using number three seagrass. I'm going to lay it right on the top, all the way around. 
of my rim. And this is going to cover up so we don't have that gap at the top of our rim. Come right around the handle, work it around. And when you get back to where you started, overlap it, oh, an inch, inch and a half, two inches. Put a clamp there. Now we have to work around the seagrass as we put in our rim, as we do our lashing. Right side faces the basket, right side of our weaver here. Come up, we've already gone through this, go underneath the seagrass. We want to hide our work. Back down the other side, I'm on the outside. Remember I have to come up here and go through my weavers. I have one row of weavers underneath the rim this time. Very same thing again, up from the bottom. Go underneath your seagrass and then down to the outside. Bring this around. Now my right side is up here. Straighten this out. Find the end. Put a point on the end. Travels better that way for us. And go between our weavers. And this is where we're going to do our lashing. We're going to cross when we come to the handles. This one I'm going to do single lash. If I wanted to do double lash on this basket, when I come to where I started before, I just simply do about face and go back around. And then I have double lashing. I know it's a lot of material to work with and it's going to get tangled on you. Straighten it out. Give it some tight pulls. Work that seagrass right on top of there so it's going to be underneath the lashing. We'll do a couple more rows here to straighten it out. In between the spokes, go ahead and start the next one so you don't have to keep straightening it out. Come back and give this one a pull. a good tug, make it good and tight. Again, if you have a hard time keeping it tight, get a clip and put a clip on it. Don't forget to cross your handles when you come to them. And when you get your weaving done, your lashing done, you'll be going on to your next, you'll be have to end it. Remember, end it the very same way we start it. And let me show you that. Give this a tug here. This one we have all finished for you, except a little bit of the end. Let me get some water and wet this. This is kind of dried out. If we don't keep it wet, it's going to crack and break on us. I'm at my handle. We'll go, go through crossing your handle again. Give it a tug. Come across in front of the handle. Make your X in front of the handle. Go in between your weavers. It's kind of tight in there, so get your screwdriver, open it up. And you're going to cross in front. Bring your reed out, cross in front. You'll be going back into the same hole here that you've already went in. Cross in the back, come from behind. Cross over this spoke here. Between here and keep right on going. There we go. It's tight in there. Just open it up. This is where I started kind of work in your seagrass here so it looks nice and smooth. Cover up any frayed ends. I can come back and clip this if this piece doesn't want to cooperate and stay in there. Come in here and I'm going to clip off this tail now. It's no use to me. Actually, it's in the way. Use my screwdriver and come between. 
Now I finished my lashing. I have to end it. I'm going to end it the very same way that I started it. It's going to be a little trickier now because you've got your seagrass up in there. Take your screwdriver and come up here, open it up, stick that piece up in there, pull it tight. Now you've got to work it underneath your seagrass. Take it to the outside. Now you have to go down between your rim and the outside of your basket. If this length is too long to work with, go ahead and cut it off. You only need about six or eight inches. Oops. Kind of doing it backwards here, too. Let me pull it around. Anyway, you've got the idea. We're going to go ahead and finish it up. Finish it the very same way that we started it. Work it down in there. In our next program, we're going to be working with a nested hearts basket. We're only going to make one. We're going to make the middle size ones. We will give you the cut pattern for all three. This is the one we'll be making is the middle size. I hope you've enjoyed weaving with me today. I've really enjoyed it with you. Thank you.